Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you our NFL Week 2 wraparound, where we're going to go around seven games on a Week 2 schedule in the NFL. We're going to start with Minnesota as they travel to Chicago to take on the Bears. Now let's start in Chicago where the Bears are hosting the Vikings and let's look at some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For Minnesota, you want to expand the coverage of the Bears, so widen out their defense and that way Christian Ponder can have easier reads. And also, you want to give Ponder those three layered routes, a crossing route, an in route, and that deep post that's a one, two, three level type read in which he can get the football out of his hands quickly. And coverage flexibility on defense, you got to be able to be flexible when you're facing the Bears who can give you some matchup problems. Don't be married to any particular coverage versus the Chicago Bears personnel, and you can have some success. Now for Chicago, you look at Steven Paella in the middle of that defense. He did a great job last week versus Cincinnati, owning the line of scrimmage and wasn't getting pushed back. He's going to have to have a banner game versus Adrian Peterson, that rushing attack of the Vikings. And you want to sell out versus a run. Until Christian Ponder can prove that he can make plays consistently in a passing game, sell out versus a run, get these guys in second and long and third and long situations. And when you get in the red zone, you have to maximize your opportunities. You have to come away with touchdowns. The Vikings play a good brand of defense. And if you don't come away with touchdowns, it's going to put them in a position to win a very close game on the road. But I like Chicago to win this matchup. Their passing game is going to start to take flight. I love what they do in the backfield. And defensively, they will do a great job of bottling up Adrian Peterson. Next up, we have Tampa Bay taking on the New Orleans Saints. And when you look at New Orleans in this ball game, what they have to do in order to come away successful, you look at nose tackle John Jenkins. He's going to be the starter this week as Broderick Bunkley will be out with injury. So he's going to have to play big. They're going to have to run without a fullback, in my opinion. I think that slows down the Saints offense. Take the fullback out of the backfield, put an extra receiver or a flex tight end, and that widens out the defense of the Buccaneers. It also takes a linebacker out of the box, and then you'll be able to run the football. And you want to stay multiple defensively. Last week, the Saints showed 3-4, a little bit of an overfront. They showed some 3-3-5. So you stay multiple defensively. It gives that offense you're facing that much more to worry about. And for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you're playing a team that you know very well in the division. Pre-snap adjustments are going to be key. The Saints are predictable by personnel as well as by formation. So when you see certain personnel groupings and formations, adjust appropriately pre-snap. You want to get that A-gap, B-gap pressure versus Drew Brees. We've always talked about this. He's a guy that doesn't like that pressure coming down the middle right in his face. Get that A-gap, B-gap pressure and you can have some success. And in the passing game, I would work the bottom of the numbers to the sidelines. When you look at Vincent Jackson and Mike Williams, two guys that are outstanding, playing above the rim, they can have some opportunities to hit some big plays deep down the field versus that Saints secondary. But I like the Saints in this ballgame defensively. I like what I saw last week. They were able to get pressure on Matt Ryan and disrupt that passing game of the Atlanta Falcons. Now, this time around, different matchup, different offensive line, a lot better offensive front in Tampa. But I do believe the Saints on defense, staying multiple, will have some success on the road. The Detroit Lions travel out to the desert to take on the Arizona Cardinals. And for Detroit in this matchup, they're going to have to pass guys off in the secondary. A lot of times, Arizona puts Larry Fitzgerald in motion. They run crossers to confuse your defense. You're going to have to communicate back there in the secondary if you want to be effective. And on offense, I would never block the blitzing backer as long as I have Reggie Bush in the backfield. If they see the backer coming, leak Reggie Bush out in the flat, dump him the football, allow him to make one miss, and take advantage of his athleticism. And Matt Stafford has to protect the ball. No errant passes will hit the ground this week versus Arizona as long as Patrick Peterson and Tyron Matthew are back there too. Outstanding ball hawks. You have to protect the football if you want to knock off Arizona. And for the Cardinals, your quick hitters in a running game could yield big-time results. That's your gap plays, your trap plays, as well as your sprint draws versus that over-aggressive defense in front of Detroit. And you want to attack the Lions' intermediate coverage. I love the way the Cardinals drive the football down the field, and I think they can have some success this week versus the Lions. And don't give up the perimeter versus a guy like Reggie Bush. If you allow him to get to the outside, if you allow your defensive ends, and your outside linebackers to get reach block, it could be a long day trying to stop the run. I like the Cardinals in this ballgame. The three wide receiver set with Fitzgerald, Floyd, and also Roberts will be a tough matchup for the Detroit Lions. And on defense, I like what they have in the secondary, and their front seven can be active enough to cause a few errant passes. So I like the Cardinals to win this one at home. Out west, you have the Oakland Raiders taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. And for Jacksonville in this ballgame, I actually like their defense. They're very talented defensively. And I think to be in position to stop Terrell Pryor, you have to go with a tight cover four look. That way you don't turn your back to the football. You stay in position and you can make plays on the ball in the passing game and also be in position to stop him if he breaks contained. 
and you also want to pressure prior from the front side that front side pressure is what a quarterback hates the most that way you can flush him to his left and you can effectively shrink the field and on offense you want to maximize your possessions you can move the football versus oakland you just have to capitalize once you get into the red zone and for the Raiders in this ball game, offensively, you got to get Michael Rivera and Marcel Reese more involved in the offense. I think that just adds to the potency of your offensive attack because I think both guys can definitely make plays after the catch. And on defense, I would go aggressive on the corners. It throws off the timing of the passing game of the Jaguars and it forces Chad Henney to hold on to that football just a little bit too long. And that way you can probably get pressure on him and put him on the ground. And it's imperative that Darren McFadden gets off to an early start in this ball game. They have to get that ground game going. You don't want Terrell Pryor running for over 100 yards each and every week. I like the Raiders in this ball game. Defensively, the Jaguars will keep this one close, but I can't trust their offense without a consistent passing game. And the Raiders right now are a young team that is building in the right direction. So I think they'll come away victorious at home versus a very tough Jaguars defense battle in the Meadowlands as the Denver Broncos travels to face the New York Giants and for the Broncos in this ball game you want to attack the safeties of the Giants in coverage you have two good tight ends utilize them to the fullest attack those safeties in the passing game and even though I love the vision of Noshaw Moreno and the speed of Ronnie Hillman you want to feature Monte Ball in the backfield this is a guy that reminds me a lot of Curtis Martin is a volume carrier give him the football allow him to gain those consistent yards so that way he can chew up the T.O.P. and limit the Giants opportunities on offense and quiet is kept the Giants do rival the Broncos with talent at the receiver position so the defensive backs can't get caught looking in the backfield otherwise you'll see Victor Cruz or you'll see Hakeem Nix streaking deep down the field as well as Reuben Randall now for the Giants in this ballgame the defense must wrap up on those quick and short passes the Broncos put a lot of pressure on your ability to make one-on-one -on -one tackles that's how you get them off the field and you want to match fire with fire the Giants do have explosive talent on offense they have three good wide receivers an explosive running back if he can hold on to the football so you can go up tempo as well you can match fire with fire this could be a shootout between the giants and the broncos and alignment assignment and execution is how you defeat denver on defense you have to get aligned properly you have to know what you're supposed to do and you have to execute and the giants can definitely do that they are a well coached football team but i like the broncos in this ball game and it's not because the giants are not talented it's because the broncos are much more consistent from week to week so we don't know which giant football team will show up out there versus the broncos huge battle in the nfc west as the seattle seahawks take on the san francisco 49ers and for the 49ers in this ball game you want to feature those young wide receivers early that's how you keep them in tune with the ball game and that's how you build that confidence you want to keep vernon davis on the move that will one aid in the running game and also give him that free release off the line of scrimmage and on defense eric reed has to take better angles he played a great game versus the green bay packers could have played an even better game if he took better angles to the football that has to change this week versus seattle and for the seahawks in this matchup you want to bracket anquan bolden try to take him out of the game situationally and that way you force those other receivers to consistently make plays and on offense you look at marshawn lynch and robert turbin quietly both guys are excellent receivers out of the backfield and i think that's a great matchup you can exploit versus those 49er linebackers and you have to communicate better up front along that offensive line you can't have russell wilson back there in the pocket getting harassed all day long it just derails your entire offense I like Seattle in this ballgame. They do match up very well defensively versus San Francisco. And on offense, I think the X factor will be how well, number one, they protect Russell Wilson, and two, how well they utilize those backs as receivers. And I think they will do a great job of doing both this week versus the Niners. And finally, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals in a huge AFC North showdown in week two. And for the Steelers in this ballgame, you have to allow Big Ben to be Big Ben. Don't try to make him a game manager. He's a deep ball thrower. He's a big play type of guy. Allow him to be himself, and you can have some success throwing the football. And on defense, I would throw various robber coverages at Andy Dalton. Here's a guy that's a see-it-throw type of a passer, so you can bait him into some questionable decisions. And I would work to establish a run. Even if the yards are not there, the attempts have to be there. Don't give up on it so quickly. And for the Bengals in this ballgame, you want to keep that Steelers defense spread out so that way, one, Andy Dalton can expand their coverage responsibilities, and two, he'll be able to quickly identify where the rush is coming from and attack those individual matchups. Now, on that defensive line, the biggest battle will take place up front, how well they can attack that weakened Steelers interior now that Pouncey is going to be gone for the season. And in the backfield, I think it's time to start Gio Bernard over Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He's a lot faster. It will not slow your offense down. You drafted Gio Bernard high for a reason. Start him over Majorvis Green Ellis, and that's just going to open up your entire offense. Both teams coming to this battle 0-1 and desperately needing a victory, but I do like
like the Bengals in this matchup. I think their offensive firepower will be too much for the Steelers to handle. And right now, offensively for Pittsburgh, there's way too many questions right now for me to feel comfortable thinking they'll go on the road and come in away victorious.